Okay, there we go. It started. With another girl uh, singing. So, so All right. We're back for week two of our Rise of the Room Lords campaign. I'm John, once again, the current GM of this game. Say hi, Chapin and Will. Hi, Chapin and Will. Hello, Chapin and Will. Cute. <laughs> As per some, some suggestions that we got over the last week of this already being live to a few friends of ours, you all already know our characters. We're going to go ahead and also let you briefly know about us, the runner and the players. Unfortunately, one of our players is not here this week due to a little mistake of scheduling at her job. That is the one who runs Link of the Fighter, which means we are now currently left with our cleric and druid, so this ought to be fun. <laughs> We're we, not going to die. We, we could have her, like, as an attack bot. Yeah, that's what I was going to try to do. So, um... I'm going to go ahead, I started last time, we're going to go ahead and start with Will this time. Will, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm the sexiest man on the planet. Um, <laughs> some of my recreational activities include uh, rubbing my nipples <laughs> and painting nude pictures of famous people. Um, I'm a cancer who likes long walks on the beach. Uh, You're a cancer. I am a cancer. I'm a cancer too. Oh, it's odd that we would both be cancers having our birthdays, like, less than three days apart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was aware of this. <laughs> As she gives the most innocent look possible. Chapin, why don't you go on ahead? I am currently a stay-at-home writer, for reasons. Um... I am working on a, uh, a book, well, it's kind of turning into a trilogy, so I'm working on three books at the same time, um, based off of, well, loosely based off of one campaign that I ran with um, my husband, my brother-in-law, and um, my now sister-in-law, because uh, they got married. Woo! Um, so that that's... When I'm being productive, other than cleaning my house, which I've been able to do this year, yay! Um, I, I, that's what I'm doing, so. And how long have the two of you been gaming, and what kind of games have you done in the past that they wouldn't know of? Uh, I've played Cowboys and Indians. Um, uh, I, I started off playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons when I was a wee thing. When, it, uh, when just my dad would run, it would just be me and my brother. And actually, uh, the first, uh, honest to God, group that actually started getting together and playing regularly was uh, uh, some of the people that uh, I, I'm sitting with here in this room. So, give yourselves a round of applause. They're my first. They've been gentle with me. <laughs> Pop your cherry. <laughs> I started off in uh, text-based form style uh, RPGs, uh, RPG chat, um, and like IMs, that sort of thing. Um, I didn't actually do D&D &D until high school, um, and then it was uh, basically, I was trying to get people to play D&D &D with me because I thought it was cool and no one wanted to for some reason. Because they were busy getting drunk and staying up late and stuff. But come college, I uh, I ran in a, in a in a couple games through the uh, gaming. Oh, what's it called? Club? I guess. Yeah, it was a gaming club at college. And um, what are you doing? Just trying to get my sister in here. Okay. I'm sad. Uh, but yeah, uh, ran my my first uh, my first game that I ran was an Avatar, uh, the Airband Airbenders, um, and then I ran the campaign with uh, 
the Pale Child campaign with my husband and family. So um, then after getting married, I found these guys. So yeah, it's about my experience. As for me, most of my childhood has been only of the video game variety. <laughs> my first foyer into the role-playing aspect actually happened in the MMO landscape of Final Fantasy XI. I ended up finding a whole group, a whole link shell slash guild that was big in the role-playing within the video game's lore. That lasted for all of the three out of five years that I was in that game world. A lot of fun. Then when I went to college down in Louisville, a second roommate of mine ended up introducing me to my very first DM of the 3.5 system. That lasted all of three weeks due to drama ended up coming in and also me having to move away by the time all that came up. Drama! It took... And the whole time I was back up here at home, I tried my best to get other people involved in 3.5 games, even to the point where I would volunteer to run them, but could never find anybody. And then I ended up on Comic Book World's website where they were like, Friday nights, D&D, sweet! And been going there for, has it been like five years now? I, I, I want to say it. Four or five, but I, I kind of joined. Yeah, we all later. ended up joining around the same time. Oh, wow! So yeah, ended up going there. We played a bit of fourth edition, but then our GM decided that every few weeks we would switch to different game styles. So the three of us sitting here have played a whole bunch D and D fourth edition. Wild Talents, World of Darkness, New and Old and Vampire. And Changeling and Werewolf. And just a whole bunch of different games. It's been a lot of fun. And I ended up getting huge in the Pathfinder, and that's where we are now. So, you all know us, I believe. More but or less. we don't know any of you. <laughs> Uh, silly Russians. New codes are for us. Yes. <laughs> oh, the 50s. Uh, such beautiful, beautiful fear of annihilation. Well, yes. <clears throat> Anywho, so yeah, we'll get to Heather's little bio the next week when she is here. For now, I believe it's time for me to attempt killing people. Really? But we're so pretty. Why? Why would you? Why would you want to kill us? I am in the DM chair. Our DM has always stated it's time to kill you all. Aww. Uh, I have to keep it local. Gotcha. All right. But anyway, so, Will, why don't you give us the lowdown of what happened last time? Uh, well, crap went down. Um. Shit happened. Yeah. Last time, uh, we were in the town of Sandpoint. They were opening up a new community center slash church slash all-around awesome place. Um, I remember... Sorry! God damn it! <laughs> Was the cap on? My, my glutino! They fell! Any hooves. Um, what, uh... God damn it, you people got me off track. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so. New church. Yes, new church. All around awesome place. Yes. Uh, Stanton Dowd was uh, coming into town with a big iron on his hip. Uh, whereas <laughs> Linka was busy keeping the peace, namely in the form of kicking around uh, Lucy's uh, dragon. Theodora. The, the Theodora? Or Theo. Theo. T-H. Theodora. Yes. Theo. Let's go with that one. Okay. So, after kicking around her dragon, time finally, time finally came around for the festival. Festival comes around, goblets attack, ruin everyone's day, namely through murder. Yes. Um, but uh, our heroes 
rise to the challenge and through a combination of valor and, and, and heroism and channeling as much dark energy as possible, uh, we, we saved the town. And don't forget the fire. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we saved the fire? Why would we uh, want we, to save fire? Sorry, as the weapons, uh, ignore me. <laughs> All right. So, long story short, we saved the town. We're big damn heroes. Yes. Yes, you all are. And during the past... So, it's been two days since that heroic fo- since that heroic battle for the town of Sandpoint against the goblins. During the whole first day was pretty much cleanup, but at the same time, even though the three of you, <clears throat> Heather's character being the town guard, were helping... At the same time, you ended up discovering rather quickly that word about your heroics have passed through town like wildfire. And now you can't seem to go anywhere without people recognizing you, wanting to say hi, wanting to handshake. The bakers will offer you free bread. The different pubs in town will offer you a free drink on the house. Uh, there was a nobleman last time that we saved. Yeah. Yes, so. there was Foxglove. He did tell you that he he's staying at the Rusty Dragon Inn and he'd like to repay you all in some way. But yeah, and also, yeah, at first, despite being all happy and jolly to see you all, there was still a bit of sadness and fear towards the goblin attacks. But after the two days, people have started to kind of chuckle over it when they remember such things as like remember when that goblin fell headfirst into a barrel and drowned (laughs) (laughs) Uh, remember when a goblin totally impaled Steve (laughs) oh oh, I'm still crying myself to sleep over that one (laughs) but hey what about that one that lit the other one on fire Oh, that was... And then he ran around and caught the buildings? Oh, that was priceless. (laughs) Property (laughs) damage. It's funny. Yeah. Yes! So, so, knowing all that, and besides helping to clean up, A, where have the two of you been staying? And B, what have the two of you been doing during the two days morning the night? Starting with Chapin. Um, I have been staying wherever I've been staying, my home, I guess, or at the church or wherever that is. Um, I assume I have an apartment or something. Um, we can go with that, or there's always the free room you get at the Rusty Dragon for a week as well. Might be a nice vacation. Um, but I live in Sandpoint, so it would make sense that I have a home there somewhere. Yes. Um... So I, I've been staying there. I've been uh, trying, uh, telling my congregation about the wondrous uh, communication that I received from our goddess Gaia, and and how that uh, went went on. But other than that, I'm I'm very uh, I guess uncomfortable uh, about all of the attention and, and free stuff um, that. I'm very meek, and, and all of the attention is just a bit too much. Theodora, on the other hand, is is very happy about all of the free stuff, and um, trying at every opportunity to get more. I should say that it's the food and drink that's being offered freely. If you ever go into any form of shop, especially a weapon and armor shop, they offer you 20% off right at the door. Very nice. Cool. Also... Speaking on your little communication with Gaia, the very first morning you wake up, you feel, you you pretty much begin to sense the magical aura of nature more and more, and you get this sudden urge to pray for at least an hour. Okay. And, and while you're doing so, no words are spoken in any way, but you just feel a much deeper connection with nature, and... Game speak wise, you now know of your druid spells available to you to prepare. Okay. Even though you still believe you're a cleric. Yes. Totally a cleric of Gaia. 
totally yes. guys. Well, what about you? Well, uh, Stanton would probably want all of the charity that's being offered his way to be offered to uh, families who had, who had victims of the Galvin attack. I'm assuming that is, that there were, you know, some injuries, a few deaths. So he would probably be trying to use whatever fame came his way to make sure that they were provided for. Awesome. Also, Good idea. during the cleanup, you're approached again by Yuna, the Bahamut priest. All right. She comes to you, she comes up to you and says, Listen, I just wanted to say that it was great seeing one of us out there taking it to the goblins. While the rest of us, Father Xanthus included, was more worried about just getting people behind lock and door. So I wanted to say thank you for that. Well, we each do our part. Also, I wanted to bring up that I couldn't help but notice that you took in the channeling negative energy? Sometimes in in offering service to our God, we are called upon to heal and support our allies. And other times it means bringing forth the righteous power to smite down the unworthy. I can go with that. And after all, you are one of a neutral god, yes? Neutral, but not without truth. She bows and goes back to her congregation. So, that's all, so that's all the two-day parts. So now you're on morning of day three. Doom, doom. <laughs> are, are, we doing, are, we doing the, are we doing the Law and Order doink doink? No, that was that was Majora's Mask. Every oh. day, every morning, it, it pops up on the screen what day it is. And uh, 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 all right, yeah. it was before Law and Order. <laughs> Law and Order stole it. <laughs> what? Not quite. What? Maybe Not quite. I don't know. <laughs> but... Yeah, check your history, buddy. <laughs> I was trying to say that Law and Order or. Never mind. Whatever. So, day, morning of day three arrives. And morning of day three arrives, so what is your all's routine during the wee morning hours? What day is it? We can say that is a, it's the weekend. A weekend? So, Sunday? Sure, why not? Alright, because he, he's probably already up trying to prepare for... Uh, that day's rituals. Awesome. And Lucy? Um, she got up with the dawn, um, has been praying, um, ha- ha- has a bit of breakfast, and then goes to uh, preach, I suppose. Um, meanwhile, Theodora is probably still sleeping um, and, and fighting a, a hangover. Awesome. Stanton, you begin to notice that your congregation has built slightly, and the population amongst them have become mostly single women. (laughs) So, so, think... I'm assuming it's because of war. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, The the, the fight with the goblins. Many, so, many, many men have died. So during <laughs> your during your whole mass, think la, think the beginning of Last Crusade when Harrison Ford's giving his whole speech in front of class, and you got that one girl with who has she loved, has like "I love you" written on her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're you're kind of getting stuff like that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so, when your congregation ends and a few of them approach you, how do you take it? Uh, uh, I try to act as, as, as innocent about it as possible, and 
they would have to be very forward in order for him to recognize it as anything other than just admiration. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, how forward? How forward do you want to take this? <laughs> Being the only two men in the room, how far do you want to take this? <laughs> do it! Play it out! Play it out! Well, what? When the initial group disperse, one of the one of the girls about early mid twenties, long blonde curly hair, finally decides to stand up from her pew and walk towards you, and says, "You." You did a great sermon today. I rather enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm simply trying to spread the, the truth to all. By the way, you you were the one that helped fight the goblins, yes? I was one of many, yes. She gets a bit closer to you as she keeps talking. I've been having problems lately. I believe a large colony of rats has taken over my basement. And my father is gone hunting in the southern fields. He won't be back for another day at least. Well, I have some, uh, I have some friends I can call upon. Maybe we can investigate this for you. We, no, no, it shouldn't be a problem just for you. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Draven is enjoying the hell out of this, by the way. Um, can I use one of my, uh, touches of law on a sense motive check to get, uh, a 17? I, I wonder if, is she trying to assassinate me, or is she just trying to lock me in her basement for a trip? <laughs> <laughs> with, with a 17? Yeah. As you look back at her thinking of how to respond, you end up seeing that glint in her eye that's like, oh, dear penthouse. So, yeah, she's wanting you somewhere very private. Uh, for, for, for reasons that are entirely PG. <laughs> yeah. I stress that. Playing in 64. Totally. That's what they're doing. Yeah, Totally. So, <laughs> by the way, well, have I mentioned that she's wearing an off-the-shoulder bodice? Ooh. Wait, an off-the-shoulder shirt with a bodice underneath? Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. He, he's, he's thinking to himself, have not the lustful flesh, for it will only lead to ruin with the pursuit of fleeting ecstasy. Rather adopt the sacred flesh, or it should be a reward for those who... <laughs> 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 so he's praying to himself. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to avoid the special hell. <laughs> um, and even Abadar is going uh, baseball. <laughs> I I suppose I could take care of this rat problem. He's going to take care of the rats. She's asking about rats. All right. All righty then. He's going to he's going to gain one experience through killing rats. Is that what they're calling it these days? When you when you kill rats, yes, that's exactly what they call it. She leads you back to the house. Oh yes. If we have any uh, listeners who are below the age of uh, 18, please get your parents' permission uh, before going any further with this podcast. Uh. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Just, just trust me on this. She leads you down to the basement. You clearly see that there is no sign of rats, but there is instead a cot up against the wall. And you also notice that the door above the stairs has been closed. And she is also removing the bodice. However, just before we get to a fade to black scenario, the door up top the stairs gets kicked open. And you hear, Salas! Are you down here with someone again? And a man comes storming down the 
upstairs, takes one look at you, and says, You better have a damn good reason. <laughs> are you the woman? Are you the woman's father? You bet your ass I am. <laughs> he, he, he comes over and kind of motions to whisper in his ear, Thank the God. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a vow to I have a vow to keep. I wanted to play along as long as I could without defiling either my vow or your daughter. <laughs> because he's a bit enraged, you still need to make a bit of a diplomacy check on that. Touch of law diplomacy. All right. Uh, Nineteen. <laughs> That's, that'll be good enough. So, he leans back from you. He still looks rather stern and upset. And he says, A, you are not allowed in my store again for at least a week. B, get out in ten seconds. He kind of bows and whoop. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go ahead and get and get 800 experience for that whole scenario, especially since you got out scot free. Awesome. Nice. It would have been split, but since he didn't drag you along, it's 800 for him. Man, I I, I should have women hit on me more often. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, women hit on me all the time because I'm the sexiest man on the planet. Totally. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Before we cut over to Chapin, where do you run off to after that little encounter? I go back to the chapel, and I'm I'm going through penance. <laughs> Alrighty then, Chapin. Yes. Um. Pretty much, you just see him running straight to the church <laughs> when you're out doing whatever. I'm I'm very confused. Um. You hear me chanting over, "Have not the lustful flesh, for it will only lead to ruin in the pursuit of fleeting ecstasy." <laughs> Is everything... I, I follow him. Is, is everything okay? I, I'm fine. Nothing happened. What are you accusing me of? I, I'm, I'm not. You were running through the streets and, and muttering something to yourself. I'm, I'm just... Did, I'm just worried, is all. Oh. <laughs> I'm worried, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I... I Go back to, I guess, shopping or whatever I was doing, or helping out, helping repair things, or... Before you two part ways, Sheriff Hemlock happens to come around a corner. Oh, no. What did Theodora do this time? He spots the two of you, walks up, he hears you say that, and he's like, well, hopefully nothing. Did he do something? Uh, What did I I do? I didn't do anything. You know what? (laughs) You know what? Never mind. Whatever it is, this is a bit more important. I need the two of you to follow me to the graveyard immediately. There's a situation. Okay. So, he starts leading you towards the boneyard, or the graveyard, that sits beside the new church center. And on your way there, he says, So, Father Zanus... Now that everything has finally calmed down and whatnot, has decided to go back to his routine of making rounds in the boneyard, pulling, helping to pull weeds and whatnot. He happened to notice that the vault that the remains of previous priests are placed into has its main door left open. Normal. Normally, we would think nothing of it, but after what happened a couple days ago, there could always be the chance that a goblin or something is hiding within. Hence the reason I'm bringing the two of you. Oh my. So, he leads you to the boneyard. Father Xantos is waiting at the main gates. And he points out to the... He points out to the vault. The vault itself, once I bring it up, it looks a a bit bigger on the map, but 
It's supposed to be 20, it's 20 feet by 20 feet. Okay. At the top of the, at the top of the vault is a statue representation of Desna. But all around the walls and the pillars are representations of other major deities worshipped within Sandpoint and Magmar area. So think kind of like the, um, oh, what's that one Greek monument that I just lost the name of now? I don't know. Anyway. The big one with all the gods. Yeah. Yeah. The Parthenon. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. So think the Parthenon, (laughs) only a much smaller scale. Cool. We all have um, full HP and spells and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's been a few days, so of course you do. Sweet. And Mm -hmm. I completely forgot to bring you all over in here. So, he brings you there. Linka is there, too, just in case. Cardboard cutout! Yeah, she waves. That's all she does is wave. And Sam. And Sam's there. Oh, I want to hear your voice. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's quite all right. (sighs) So, sure, Hemlock orders Father Xantos to return to the church and await a status report. He says, so, if the two of you would like to check it out, I'll be close by in case anything happens. Oh, and by the way, everybody make perception checks already as you're walking up towards the vault. Uh, 14 plus 8. Oh, I actually have to open up my dice. 22. Okay. So you notice it. Just wait not Uh, 19. You're good. Uh, okay. You both notice that there are goblin footprints all over the grounds of the vault. Hmm. In fact... In fact, uh, Chapin, you're the druid. Go ahead and make a survival check. Survival? Yes. With a survival check, you could determine how many there was. Um, do, you want, do you want me to do the touch of the wall? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus 3, 13? On the dot. Wow. You, deter- okay. you determine that there were no more than six goblins running about in this immediate area. However, you also determine that there was a medium humanoid with them. Okay. Not in... The way the footprints look, he wasn't struggling or fighting with them at all. He was walking amongst them. Okay, it, it, it looks like the six goblins had a, had a friend? And the footprints lead to, to the gates and then stop. I, I, can I look at on the other side of the gates? Well, the other, as you can see on the map, the vault is gated off from the rest of the graveyard, so you can pretty much determine they had to climb over into the vault area. Probably went back and back over now. Okay. So, you got the vault. The door is hanging ajar, and other than seeing the footprints, you don't hear or notice anything. I, I relay this information. And, and Theodora is still sleepy on, on my shoulders, but starting to kind of perk up at the mention of goblins and maybe possible fighting. Yes. If it's, <clears throat> if it's goblins that are down there, I don't think we have too much of a problem. Your uh, Stanton turns to... Uh, who is our guide? Uh, Sheriff Hemlock. At Stanton Dowd turns to Hemlock. Your town wouldn't happen to have any history with undead beings, would you? No. No, not in the slightest. I mean, every time... Every time one of our... No, I'm good. Every time one, one of our citizens and preachers die, their bodies are always blessed in a way where no form of necromancy should be capable of getting to them. Should. I mean, never know if such powerful wizards capable of 
running about and all. Well, if we're going to head in there, I'd suggest Theodora take point, myself, and uh, I'll uh, be her lookout. Lucy, stay in the middle, and Linka, you can watch our back. She nods. Okay. Theodora scrambles off and, and starts walking. All right, so. So if I can arrange this. Doop. 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 Like that. All right. So, like I said, the doors are hanged open. It's just that you can't really see into it unless you push it open further. So, what does Theodora do? Um, she's sniffing about. Would she smell anything other than Goblin? Well, she does She would be trained. She doesn't actually give you any form of signal to say something threatening is inside there. It's kind of like when you send a police dog to sniff for drugs and it just keeps sniffing around and finds absolutely nothing at all. She just looks back at you and is like... Okay. Um, then she nudges the doors open? Alright, so when the doors open... Well, when you nudge the door open, the first thing you see are two body or two skeletal bodies laying on the ground. But once the doors open, they immediately look towards you, stand up, and begin walking towards the outside. Like Lucy screams. Alrighty then. Uh, the- Theodora does a blast of fire and gets ready to fight. Alright, so technically, since there's no surprise round involved, we're just going to immediately roll initiative for this. Once I bring up the turn order. Ta da! And I need. I need to clear those, those, and those. We do not need them anymore. Where's initiative? Oh. Okay. It should be your dex bonus since nah. it's just gotcha. your dex bonus since you didn't take improved fruit. initiative or anything like that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Eight. So we'll go ahead and put eight down for hers. Seventeen. Plus nothing because I don't have a dex. There's nothing on the turn order. Blah. You should see it. We, you need to add our tokens. I already did that. No, no. Okay, did it. let me clear them all out then. So I guess the only one you see is just the skelly? Yep. Yep. Okay, there's Stanton. There's Lucy. Oops. And there's Linka. Technical difficulties. I know. We we use roll twenty when we game to make map making much easier. So during times like that where we seem to be doing nothing, it's only because we're setting up the battle map that we're using. So uh, bear with us. Should Lenka roll? Lenka will roll. She had a dex of sixteen, so her modifier is three. Crooked. Wow. Okay, she gets a four. <laughs> Woohoo! A manly one. The skeletons. It's crooked. We we have a box. You can roll in the box. Ten. No. No twelve. Okay. The skeletons go on an eighteen. Oh, but I was better. I was I was sexy. Why do they get to go before me when I'm so sexy? 
because they're right, skeletons. So, so the only way they're they're that thin is because they vomit. Yeah. Starve themselves. So yeah. she's all the so Theodora is all the way up there at the door. They get to go. They are both going to trudge towards her since. She is the one closer to them. So, bam. Bam. I did not want to bring you up. And they're both going to swipe at her. Uh oh. With their two claws. Two claws each? Yes. Oh, ooh. Snap! What? Well, crackle. Wow, so the that one's not going to hit because it's only a 2. The other one is a 17. Yes. And 12. 12 damage? No. no. 12 AC? Yeah. Doesn't hit. Alright, so only one hit towards her is a D4 plus 2. Heh, <laughs> 3. Cool. Stanton. You got skellies. One, two, three, four. Despite the stereotype of clerics, undead are actually not his forte. Um, <laughs> <laughs> only now, since Man. you don't have channel positive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally every other type of creature he can affect, except for undead. <laughs> yep. Um, so, he is going to use Touch of Law on Theodora. She can now um, it, take an 11 on a single roll of her choice. Oh, cool. Alright. That which makes it Lucy and Theodora's turn. Okay. Um, Lucy uh, doesn't have any... Well, she could cure light wounds, but that we should probably save that for later. So, Rem- remember my suggestion last week when it comes to weapons. <laughs> Range, get a get a bow. Yeah, I didn't do that. Well, you got I time. So done that. you got time. So after this combat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so she 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 kind of screams a little bit more. Um, Theodora, however, slices and dices. So I. Like, I should actually say, since Cure Light Wounds is a positive energy spell, she can use it to harm undead creatures. You I'm, just have to get within touch range of them. Yes, and I don't know what's happening after this. And I don't want to waste True. my only cure. True. So, Theodore's going to attack one? Yes. I think you have to use... Looking up the yeah law the, touch of law thing. Yeah, I, want, I was seeing if she has to use if she has to use it after seeing the results of the roll or if, what's it say? It says you could touch a willing creature as a standard action, infusing it with the power of divine order and allowing it to treat all attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, and saving throws for one round as if the natural twenty resulted in an eleven. Oh wow! So you could use that for a whole round. You can use that for every roll in a round, every attack roll. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so then, have Theodore yeah. roll them bones. So that's... But not really roll them bones, because it treats the natural 20 as if it's an 11. So 14. <laughs> so she automatically rolls a 14? Mm-hmm. Mm. Still gonna have to roll it, aren't I? Yeah, because they got an AC of 16 since they Ah, uh, what the fuck. That's a load of crap. Aww. But the damage will be... Yeah, didn't do... Nope. 13, and then the talent. Four! Yeah, so she completely misses. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, we're all gonna die. Yep. (laughs) How far away is Linka placed, by the way? (laughs) A full 50 feet. But if she's using the bow... Yes, she can use the bow. She gets...
gets a bait, she gets an attack bonus of plus four with a bow. The only thing is, we need to move her over here so she's not shooting in the melee. <laughs> and she's going to aim for skelly number two. Well, shape it's out. I wonder if I can draw penises on her uh, character sheet. And see what that is. Dude! <laughs> she listens to it at some point. Uh, seven, yeah, she hits, and a long bow is a d8. For five points of damage. Well, that's one we can cross off the list. So our cardboard fighter has dropped one of the skeletons. Something that us in-person players could not do. The second skeleton is going to make his attack again. So... The four is not going to hit. The thirteen, will that hit on her pet? Uh, AC of 13, so... So, yeah. yeah. Her pet's going to take another three points of damage. Alright. And then you're up. See, when I said no real combat comes to mind, it's only because if anything was planned at all, it was just these two skeletons left behind. Alright. Uh, hmm. Let's see what I've got here. Let's go with... Uh, guidance. I'm going to touch... Uh... I'm going to touch Fiodora and give her plus one guidance that she can use on an attack roll. Awesome. Alright, and we're going to pause here for a moment because both players had to go out of the room for drinks. So, talk, some, talk amongst yourselves. Because I'm afraid that if I pause this thing, that would mean having to make a split audio track and... Having to fuse those together, something I really don't feel like wanting to bother with, and yada yada. I find it rather funny that two skeletons are getting into so much trouble. Hey, the DM didn't kill us while we were out. Yay! Well, of course not, because it's your turn. But I, I already, I, 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 I Oh, I, you I cast, cast Guide, then it's Lucy's turn. Yeah, I cast oh. Theodora in all the right places. Um, yeah, Theodora has a plus one to any roll that she wants. Awesome! Uh, attacking. Awesome. Dang Do you it. want to spend the hero point? Um, I still have a talent. True, you're still, you still got the talents. to do is get above a four on a damage roll and it's gone. <laughs> okay. Um, so sh I'll roll again for the Talon. A two, so that didn't hit. Um, 1d4, three plus one, so four damage. It's done. <laughs> yes! And, and there's a penis and balls on my character sheet. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Once again, if there are any children <laughs> under the age of PG movie level, yeah. really shouldn't be listening no. to us. No. I'm going Consider to, the F-bomb I dropped earlier. We, we, I'm yeah. going to seriously have to put a banner up on the next screen before the actual show starts like I did before. Yeah. It's like, last time, this is our first podcast, so be patient with us. This time, parental, parental discretion advisory. Yeah. 
so, awesome. So, the skeletons drop. Now, aside from what the skeletons were wearing when they were buried, they also have this tattered cloak about them that when Hemlock looks at it, he's like, we normally don't bury people in cloaks like that. You also notice that the coffin to the previous priest, the one who died in the fire, has been left open and empty. Hmm. Along with two other coffins that these skeletons probably came out of. Is there anything I can find out about the cloaks? Uh... You don't have any form of roll on Unfortunately, not to you, it just looks like an ordinary cloak. Okay. Hemlock suggests to taking it to any of the town wizards. Okay. They might be able to look at it, look it over. Say, so the footprints of the human, or of the humanoid leaving, uh, traveling with the goblins, were there any prints of him coming in, or... Were they only prints of him leaving? Coming in and out. Coming in and out. Okay. Sheriff Hemlock, looking at the situation, says, I'm willing to believe anything that the whole raid may have been a distraction on us. Why they would want Father Tobin's body is beyond me, though. Is there anyone in town who could tell us more of this Father Tobin? Oh, I'm sure any of the wizards that you ask the robes about, or Amico used to be a traveling bard, and bards seem to know everything about anything. We'll try them. In the meantime, there's, uh, we should see if we can get some clerics over here with holy water and treat them. Yeah, I'll send Father Xantos back out here to do that. I will also get my own town guard to see if we can follow, see if we can find and follow any more footprints. I would like to ask, however, that if you do decide to ask anybody about the previous priest whose body is now missing, ask as minimum as possible. Don't even mention where you got the robes, just that you got them. The last thing we need is people panicking that two dead bodies were brought back to life and our previous father's remains are gone. We're already getting past the goblin raid as it is. Okay. And the, the uh, priest's name again? Uh, Tobin. Tobin. Right. Tobin... I can't even pronounce the last word, the last name they give me, so I won't try. The, it, hmm? yeah, I was going to say it's in Vulcan. Yeah. With the name so long, you can't pronounce it. Yeah. There we go. Not so much as so long, <laughs> just that the first letters are easy A. Hmm. Ha <laughs> ha ha! No. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, he also states, and... While my town guard's investigating the footprints, um, I would ask that you also continue keeping a presence in town instead of searching outside yourselves. Just for the sake of the people. Alright. Okay. Awesome. So, he goes off with Lenka. What did the two, where did the two of you go first? Well, that, uh, the tavern owner, Miko probably be the first person we'd stop by with trying to get information. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you head to the Rusty Dragon? Yep. yep. Alright. And, and Theodore is very happy to be in the tavern. The Rusty Dragon. And... So, when you get to the Rusty Dragon, Amiko is currently at the bar doing her thing, serving drinks while also tending to the food. At the fire. <laughs> Legolas. <laughs> yeah, I've populated the map of the tavern with various 
characters of different stories and games and whatnot. <laughs> These two right here are not necessarily character models, but character portraits from Final Fantasy XI. But, so yeah, Amiko is both serving drinks and tending to food right on a stove next to the bar. And in the back, you see a halfling woman running back and forth between two different stoves tending to the rest of the food. There are other musicians up on stage performing, and everybody's just having a grand old time telling, talking about whatever. So... She sees the two of you, and she's like, Look who it is! The heroes of Sandpoint! Rounds for the two of them! The on heroes the house. of Sandpoint, a man they call down. Lose <laughs> <laughs> 50 experience. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Just kidding. Uh. So, you all come up to the bar, I guess? Mm-hmm. She sets down drinks for you, even knowing that the two of you probably won't drink it. Theodora steals the drinks and drinks them. Right. And she says, what can I give you, uh, food-wise? Oh, we probably won't be here too long. I'm actually just looking for an address. An address? <laughs> yes. Uh, he takes, like, a napkin and writes uh, down information on Tobin and slides it to her. She picks it up, looks at it, looks at you. Why, exactly? We're doing a bit of sightseeing. Don't you live here? For him. I need to familiarize with myself with the town. It would help if I knew about some of the prominent local figures. She nods and looks back towards the kitchen. Bethana. Tend to the bar. I'm going to be with some guests for a few minutes. And she motions you to follow as she takes you to a back table. And she sits down. I, know, I don't have you guys on there at all, but... Yeah, whatever. She sits down, and she's like, So, Father Tobin. <sighs> Such a shame what happened to him and his daughter. See... Father Tobin used to be the previous preacher of Desna at the church several years ago. You probably remember him. Mm -hmm. Well, you probably also remember the fire that took him. Of course. No one is quite sure how it happened or why. In fact, one of the stranger things about it was his body was found almost immediately. Burnt, but still recognizable. His adopted Dala, daughter Nala, on the other hand, her body could not be found. Yet at the same time, no search party could find her, so we all figured that she died in the fire as well. He used to care for her a lot. He found her abandoned on the road as a child. She was half Eshmara, the angel race, the angelic race. She's ha she was half Eshmara. Oh, the townspeople treated her like a miracle on Galora, the planet name. Needless to say, it created a rather hard life for her, but he did his best to raise her until the fire happened. she t downs a bottle of ale. An entire bottle? Well, yeah. Ah, a, uh, a cup of ale. Yeah. What else would you like to know? You seem to, he seemed to have spent a lot of time with this, uh, daughter, Nala. Well, of course. Like I said, he found her abandoned, or at least left behind. We never really found out what the deal was there. He was just on his way back to Sandpoint. She was left on the, he saw her left on the side of the road, brought her back, and raised her as his own. 
the townspeople, of course, treat her as a miracle. I mean, she was so, so miraculously beautiful for being an Ashmara. And he was livid of her beauty. He figured her a very child of Desna. He wanted her to go in to go into the sisterhood. But if memory serves me, something happened that created a bit of a spite between them. Did she know that he wasn't her father? Oh no, she she always knew that. He was very open about that fact. No one was really quite sure what had happened. I mean, other than the fact that she was dating this boy, and then he just suddenly left town, and she was suddenly barely seen on the streets again. Who was this boy? Oh, some blacksmith that came into town one month, dated her the next month, and was gone in a flash. Blacksmith? Blacksmith, blacksmith apprentice. They come and go. Do you have any name? Act? Unfortunately, I do not. Have anyone who would know a name? Perhaps whoever's running the blacksmith taverns now. Hmm. Bards get knowledge. Everything, don't they? Bardic knowledge. She notices the robes that you're all carrying. And is like, those are magic, by the way. Can you tell us about them? It's extremely faint. They've probably been laying around for a few days now, but I know necromagic when I feel it. Can you? Tell us anything about them? About the magic? Other than you lay the, you put it around a corpse, it reanimates it for a length of time. And with how faint it feels, it was probably about to go out in the next 24 hours. Hmm. Where did you find them? Oh. Flea market. <laughs> <laughs> it is a trading town after all. <laughs> she, she's not even going to bother the sense on you. <laughs> Good, because he's not even bothering to hide it. <laughs> it is a trading town, after all. Find all sorts of weird things here. Yeah. Anything else I can help you with? Mm. Do you, would you happen to know someone who might be able to help us trace the magic on this? If we're buying quality goods, we want to make sure that it's coming from a reputable magician. Yeah. Unfortunately, with how weakened it is, it's most likely not possible. Had you found it, had you bought it or found it a day earlier at least, maybe. Curse these roads. But then they seem to muck up everything. But then again... Robes such as that are like wands. Any random wizard and cleric will enchant one, put it out on the market, and then just leave it be, taking their gold. Rising pe- raising people from the dead, though, that seems to be a rather specialized market. One that tends not to advertise itself. True, but some people feel that having your dead relatives around the house with robe a bone Robes of bones wrapped around them makes a nice security system. That's horrible. I have seen things in my adventures, let me tell you. I one time met a cleric of death who thought it was all the rage to have walking corpses. It's a reference to one of my last characters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God. Lucy, uh, looks like her innocence has been stolen. Uh, Theodora, on the other hand, is, is kind of listening for more. I mean, if you all wish to hear more of my adventures, feel free to stop by. I sometimes go up on stage and tell a story or two. Just never ask me about the one that made me retire. 
That's the only one I will never tell. If that's the one that you'd never tell, then why would you even bring it up? Because so many people ask me about it, and I've grown rather tired of it. Lucy nods. Yes. She finishes the rest of her cup and looks over at the bar. I should probably get back over there. Is there anything else I can help you all with? Uh, yes. This Tobin, when he died, where did his uh, possessions go to? Like a journal? diary. I believe that they, since there was no living heir left for them to go to, let's see, anything of monetary value he had was sold off to charity as per his will. Anything completely personal of his, on the other hand, could have been locked in the bank vaults, just hoping that some random, far-off relative would happen to stop by. No point in destroying them or selling them off. Who would want to buy some random journal of a priest? Would these would these be in a bank here in town or in a larger vault? Say, one in Magmar. I would believe they started out here. I wouldn't imagine them being moved to Magmar. He was born and raised here, after all. And the ownership of this security of this uh, security deposit box that would still be within the Church of Desna. Basically, yes. Unless Father Xantos took ownership over it, it may have reverted to the city's property. Thank you very much. No problem. Well, we can... Uh, I, I'm assuming they uh, kind of, as the group, we regroup elsewhere. Yeah. Well, we can either try and follow the lead with the blacksmiths, try and find out who this boy was that she was seeing, or we could try talking with the mayor or uh, priest of priest or priestess of Desna figure out if we can get away into that bowl. I think that's the best idea. I'm just kind of confused that uh, Xanos didn't mention it before. I mean, if he took possession. He probably didn't think much about it. Point. So, while you're all sitting there chatting, the doors of the tavern open and Aldrin Fox Club happens to step through, and he immediately sees the three of you. Theodora raises her glass, her empty glass, like another. He walks on over, he says, Friends! So good to see you again! He just immediately sits down. So, tell me, how have your days been here in town? Theodora sets her glass right in front of him, insistently. I've Met he some... motions for the waitress to come over and fill it. Yay! I've met some interesting members of my congregation. <laughs> really? Oh, you know, I may have heard something, but I swore it was a lie. I could have sworn it was a lie, too. <laughs> Surely you would not take advantage of a woman. I would, I would not. Then again, I can't control what the perceptions of others. I knew it! I knew it! That general store owner is a liar! What happened? Uh, um, the daughter of the general store owner must have taken a liking to me. She tried to seduce me in her cellar. Oh. Oh my. You see? I knew it. He tried to make it sound like it was you. I specifically remember telling him, thank the gods that he was there, but... <laughs> or it may have been his daughter saying it. Oh, well, either way, people are saying things about you now. <sighs> Lucy is blushing. Just at the whole idea. <laughs> Theodora, on the other hand, it is... It wouldn't be the first sacred. time I had a negative reputation. So, so, about my wanting to thank you for saving me. 
I was hoping that the three of you could join me on a boar hunt in the Tickwood. No, no geography role necessary. You know it's called that just because, you know, other than the normal wooden wildlife there, it also has ticks about the size of a horse within the woods. Relatively harmless because of how big they are. Wow. No goblins <laughs> come within the boundaries of the tick wood at all because they're small enough to be prey. Okay. Hey, I was wondering if you could all join me on a boar hunt there. Oh, Theodora loves hunting those ticks. Not necessarily ticks, boars. Because I'm hoping to bring a boar back and offer it for dinner. Oh. I believe we could assist in that matter. Wonderful! When shall, when would you be available to go? Uh, tomorrow, perhaps? Uh, what time were you thinking of? Oh, early in the morning's always best. I believe we could accommodate. And, uh, uh Stanton down as, as, as soon as he uh, gets back, he's trying to read if using negative energy somehow makes food inedible. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wonderful, wonderful. I shall, I shall supply you all with horses from the stables, and I shall meet you bright and early tomorrow around sunrise. Okay. He kisses your hand before he stands up to leave. She blushes bright red. She says, I hope to see you as well, young lady. Oh, oh okay. And he immediately leaves. Theodora uh, elbows uh, Stanton. Stanton, like, yeah? <laughs> I see you're not the only one getting attention. <laughs> oh, he's he's just being polite, I'm, I'm sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's, she, she's, uh, oh, what's, completely embarrassed. You get a hero point for being completely embarrassed. <laughs> so, where to next players? Um, we still have a few hours left of the day, I'm assuming. Yes. Alright, uh... Quest for the journal. Yeah, let's ask either the... Let's first ask the mayor, and then if she uh, declines, or if she's a no-go, then we can then try uh, the Church of Disney. Alright, cool. So, you head towards City Hall. You are immediately welcomed in since everybody recognizes who you are. Awesome. Even beneath the mask. <laughs> well, I'm the o- if I'm the only one walking around wearing a mask, then yes, I'm pretty sure I'm the kind of stand out. Yeah. yeah. You are immediately welcomed in, and the receptionist there says, Yeah. Give me one minute. I will see if she is available to speak. She goes right into the office. You hear her say that Lucy and Stanton are here wanting to speak with you, and she's immediately like, well, hold on my messages. And she follows her right out and says, I don't know what a message is. (laughs) Maybe, maybe doves? Carrier pigeons? All right. Like a, like a letter? Breaking the wall. Breaking the wall. <laughs> breaking the wall. Break it. Smash it. I'm like Deadpool up in here. <laughs> Came in like a wrecking ball. Oh, God. So, she, so. Sorry. She comes on, so the mayor comes on out. The mayor whose name I should probably write down at some point. The mayor who will not be a player this game. Yes, Deborah. <laughs> so Mayor Deverin, a female human, steps out and says, It's so good to be able to speak with you two. What, how, what can I do for you? Well, we've been investigating some of the damages that have been done uh, around the city by the goblin attack. Um, we were wondering, it may be pertinent to our investigation that we have access to a Father Tobin's journal, if he left any such thing. 
We were on, of the understanding that he had some sort of security deposit box. Well, yes, of course, but he was, he's been dead for several years now, since the fire. What could his journal pertain to the goblin raid? It's very complicated. She, she is the mayor of this town. Perhaps she deserves to know. But he said to, to keep it quiet. And we are keeping it quiet by only communicating with the highest levels of authority in the town. Okay. Is something the matter? <laughs> I'm sure that you saw that Hemlock was preoccupied earlier today. Yeah, he seemed preoccupied throughout the past few days, yes, but is there something else that went on? We believe that goblins may have attacked Father Tobin's too. We found robes there that were used specifically for the purpose of reanimating the corpse. The corpse is probably of fellow priests. Her face just falls like, what? What? We... We understand that this is a delicate matter. We've been trying to keep it under wraps. Oh, dear gods. When? Was that today? Yes, earlier today when we were called to... Investigate. It, and what of Tobin's remains? The tomb was smashed open. His remains were missing. Oh... Uh. Thank Desna he has no living relatives to be told of this. So, his body, how long ago would it have happened? It probably would have been about the time of the goblin raid. I see. Well then, maybe we should take a look at that, shouldn't we? Um, give me one minute. She goes back into her office, and her receptionist steps back out, giving you a wrapped-up parchment with the town seal on it. So she says, give that to the bank owner, and he'll give you access to the vault. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, I guess that's where you go to next? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. The bank owner is going to be a dwarven man dress rather formally as he walks over and says I'm going to help you. Yes, we, we uh, have the mayor's authority to access the uh, estate of one Father Tobin. He breaks the seal and opens it up, looks it over and says very well then, let me go fetch the keys. So the- Theodora tries to follow him to see where the keys are hidden. <laughs> I, uh, is Theodora doing this openly? Well, she's trying to be as sneaky as possible, but... Stanton kind of grabs her by the nape and says, I believe Abadar has some very specific rules regarding thievery. She tries to look innocent. Don't play that with me. <laughs> you can't play a player. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> she she looks downcast and, and and kind of grumbles a little bit. <laughs> Giving you one for that. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Getting a hero point for that. Don't play a player. So he comes back out with this large ring of golden keys, leads you into a stone made vault which looks to have been dwarven made as well. Goes over to a wall of key locks, sets one of the keys and turns it, light flashes, and you end up seeing the segment of it being a box, and he pulls it out. He says, this was everything personal enough to not sell. I believe there is some type of leather encased journal in there, or it might have just been a ledger of the church, but here you go. Thank you. When you're finished, just slide it right back into the hole and it will seal up. Alright. And he walks out. Do you have to detect magic? Um, 
I don't. Ah, uh, yes, you do. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of, yeah course. of course I do. That's yeah, that's a that's, that's a cantrip, right? A th- that's a thing. Yeah. 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 Detect magic. Um. In general, there's re- there's really nothing magical inside the box at all, other than the magic of the box itself, which you just witnessed. I wanted to make sure we, we weren't dealing with exploding rounds. Uh, no. Because, that would be bad. Because uh, <laughs> we, we, we've encountered exploding runes where there shouldn't be exploding runes. Several times? Yeah. Like on cows? Yeah. <laughs> I believe the target is one item weighing 10 pounds or less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to those of you are, And those of you listening... You know who you are. <laughs> oh, he's going to get a kick out of that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you open it up, when you open it up, there are actually only three items within. One is a very small hand-painted portrait that of a silver-haired woman. You could only think that that's <clears throat> Nala. <coughs> because... The beauty is encaptured in this painting. The second item that you see is a is the holy symbol of Desna that would have been his. Well, he, most likely he had one buried with him, and this is another one that he kept on his person. <coughs> the third thing you see is a red leather bound, very worn booklet. Uh, Canton starts reading the journal. Most of the pages are very routine. You know, talks about the congregation, the people he meets, the travels he makes. Then you come across the one stating how he found a child left on the streets, took it back home. As it grew, he began realizing that it was an Eshmara. And not only being very proud of this fact, but considered it a child of Desna and fate that he would have found it. Several pages later is, I can't believe how she betrayed me and Desna. I raised her to be a perfect little angel. I wanted her to go into the sisterhood and make our goddess proud. And then I find that not only has she been fraternizing with a blacksmith, no less, but has allowed herself to become impregnated. Well, crap. Oh my. A date set nine. A date set seven months later. The child came early. The child was also stillborn. I'm not even sure why I'm calling it a child. This thing was monstrous, to say the least. I had the sisters take it out into the woods and burn its remains. And the journal pretty much just ends there. I bet that didn't go over well. You mentioned... Sisters. Is it possible that any of the sisters who are still at the temple participated in this event? It might be possible. It would. I know a few of them have passed on or gone to Make a dodge local check. You get a plus two since it's your town. Touch of law. <laughs> Twelve plus whatever that is. So your knowledge local is is four. Four. Um, with touch of law, that would be fifteen. You know, that's assume guidance as well. Okay. And, and that, that, that's <laughs> like that a sixteen. Right, go ahead and spend your spells up whatever. <laughs> hey, so, guidance is guidance is an horizon. I can. Oh, true. <laughs> so, everything that you said before I made you roll. Okay. Plus, in fact, there might be one who was promoted to head of sisterhood over the years. 
Oh, I, I, I do believe that the head is, 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 is one of the sisters who, who was there. We could try asking her if she knew anything else about this particular oh, yes. event. Well. I'm assuming it's getting pretty late in the day because we just went from killing <laughs> we went from getting seduced in the morning <laughs> to killing skeletons to a uh, bar crawl uh, around 11 o'clock then we went to the then we sat around, palled around with foxglove, then we went to the bank and got a book <laughs> Yeah. And so now it's probably getting pretty late. <laughs> yeah, it's so. it's getting it's pretty much past sunset now. All right. So it's either bother the sisterhood now or wait. No, uh, we should probably wait. Besides, we we have to be up for the hunt tomorrow. True. So now, I should get a bow. Would you like to get a bow? I would like to get a bow. Twenty percent off. Twenty percent off a short. What is it that druids are good with? Is it just short bows? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I know. Th- I know they can use crossbows. I believe so. But either way, because I got my ultimate equipment guide right here, so oh, I can cool. tell you exactly what you need. I just need to know what their proficiencies are, is. Um. Blah, blah, go, blah, blah. go go to the druid class page. Um, I'm finding that. I think you were. Oh, that's race. There you go, classes. Do, 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 animal, no. Do, 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 do. Weapon and armor proficiencies. Club, dagger, dart, quarterstaff, scimitar, scythe, sickle, short spear, sling, and spear. They are also proficient with all natural attacks of any form they assume with wild shape. Um... That's uh, armor. So slang or or short spear. You can throw a short spear. So wait, they're not provi- proficient with any range weapon. Wow. Hmm. I mean, except for stuff like darts and whatnot. Yeah. You uh, could you could totally throw daggers. I believe. I mean, yeah, hmm. if you want to go with something like that, or I believe that if you use something that you're not proficient with without <laughs> the necessary feet, it's a negative four to the roll. Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay, so... Sling. Sling, all right. A sling, sling. Gi- a sling gives you a D4 damage, and if I was the kind of GM that worried about ammunition, you wouldn't have to since you could just pick up any random rock or something to fit into it. But I'm not. The only time I worry about ammunition count is when you're using enchanted arrows or something like that, like Dragon Age does. Enchantment? Enchantment! Enchantment! (laughs) Now, on your way back to wherever it is you all stay, a, you hear a woman calling out in the streets for help. When you come, <laughs> as, as Stanton does the Superman shirt. <laughs> da 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 da. Theodora is trying to drag Lucy home, but Lucy follows as well. You see a woman walking, running up. Oh yeah, uh, about that, about that sling. I'll it, find it. Don't uh, worry. Well, slings. What? Well, it anyway. Be in here. Actually, okay. no. It has no price. It's free. Awesome. It's actually marked free. Anyway, you see a woman with a baby clutched to her chest and a kid and holding another kid's arm, running up the main street, asking for help. And. When she comes to you all, she's like, Oh, thank God, I found the two of you! What seems to be the matter, miss? <sighs> well, it's... There was a goblin in our house. In- Look what it did to my boy! And she holds up his arm, and there are bite marks all along his arm. Oh, my. It killed the dog! And attacked him in his sleep! 
We always thought it was just night terrors the past few days, but this thing's actually been living in his closet. We just left our husband at the house when he tried attacking and I don't know what happened. Where is your house? She leads you down to the southern area of Sandpoint. Now, I am you, actually going to roll sense motive here. Well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> other than Be the suspicious. Fact, um, um, other than the fact that she looks can, insanely uh, terrified. Can, can Theodora roll sense motive as well? What, what was your roll? Uh, mine was a nine. A nine? A nine. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's not a critical failure. Stan's just not sure how he feels. Nineteen! And no, no... No bonuses, bonuses. whatsoever. Your dragon's like, oh, dude, certainly gotta help him. <laughs> really? Hmm, okay. Yeah, Theodore's like, dude, gotta help him. <laughs> uh, I guess Wait, we gotta is, help him. Is, Fe- is Fe- Theodora convinced of the... F- convinced that she's telling the truth? Or is she... J- or... or sh- Somehow she motivated to saying we need to help them. Because I think Theodore would probably say, hey, I want to go home and sleep. <laughs> yeah. Theodora wants to go home and sleep. There's a but... bit of a discrepancy between <laughs> what, well, what they feel and what, the, what they detect. Yeah. She's telling the truth, but sleep. So do you all follow her anyway, or are you yes. like, no, you're lying? We be going. All right, so she leads you to her house. Her house is all boarded up to be ready for the night, so all the windows are closed. She had shut the door upon leaving. Is there any light coming from any of the cracks, or is it completely dark inside? It It's pretty much completely dark inside. She's like, the... Fireplace should still be roaring in there. We usually sit in the study before going to bed ourselves. Light on quarterstaff. All right. Uh, guidance, guidance, guidance. Virtue, virtue, virtue. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Cool. Light gives another thirty feet, I believe. I Actu- light this, and he's holding his morning star. It's my last one. Light. Wait, wait. Light, lights a. Oh! You can, t- you can oh! totally light everything. Zero level spells! Yay! Okay! I light light it. Light it up, 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 light it up, 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 light it up. Oh, come on, give me a. Oh, come on, GM board. Give me a thing on light radius. I guess you're not going to. The GM board does not love you. Nope. No, it does not. I'm pretty sure it's... It's okay, GM. We love you. Yeah! No hero points for flirting. Uh... Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Show them your boobs. I, I did get new bras. Lucy, <coughs> third, Linka, bringing up the rear. Sure. 
Alright. Let's do this, bitch. So, the door opens and you can see inside. Cool. Theodore is sniffing. Sh should I roll perception for her? Yes. Okay. Totally. That is... Oh! Yeah. Hero uh, point. Hero point. Hero pointing. Spend that. Well, that didn't happen. If you that didn't see my one of my messages on the group page, if you have a character token highlighted, you can use the arrow key to move them as well. You can even move diagonally with the arrow keys. Sort of like when you're controlling a video game character in the old days. Cool. That would make instances like this where <coughs> I have light activated where I can see you moving in real time instead of when you click, drag, and let go. If I hit tab, will that switch to... Oh, damn it, no. Twelve. Twelve? She is definitely getting the smell of blood. She is very happy about this. Well, of course she is. So. The dragon is very chaotic line. Oh, yes. So, right now, as you can see, the house itself is... You do have the fireplace providing some light. See, one of the sad things about light sources, you either have light or complete pitch black. Mm -hmm. You can't... So, anyway, there is a fireplace spreading some light, but when you step inside and light the house up more, from where you're standing down on the first floor, it's empty. And also quiet. Theodora sniffs after the blood, trying to follow where it is. Let's see if we're going to move people into the house. Theodora's smell of blood is leading her up the stairs. Okay, so Theodora heads towards the stairs. I'm just assuming this is where people live. In, in general, yeah. Yeah. All right. So the blood leads her up the stairs to the second floor. Okay. She she waits at the bottom of the stairs for everyone else to catch up. All right. Because while she's she's excited, she's not stupid. <laughs> so, how do you all proceed up the stairs? Because this is the stairs are wooden after all, and they are. So, you know, squeaky, squeaky. Um, we have, we have a cleric in chain mail. <laughs> we have Lucy. <laughs> and then we have, uh, a, a fighter a who's fight. also in chain mail. Yeah, a fighter in chain mail in the back. I'm pretty sure stealth is not even an option. Theodora there. could stealth. Theodora can fly, and she does have stealth. So she could go sneak and, and scout ahead. Is there anything else on the ground floor? Um, no, other than the furniture and whatnot, there's nothing of peculiar interest at all. Make, make noise down here? Yeah, so we're going to walk over, investigate some more of this lovely fireplace. Alright then. Because, as we all know, when you hear motion in one part of the house, there's no way there's motion on the other part of the house. Exactly. So, Me. Theodore's going up alone? Yes. Alright. Stealthing. Come on. Good roll. A six plus a six, so twelve. Well, get her moving up there then. I'm not going to necessarily tell you if it succeeds or not. Um, okay. The, the, does stomping around downstairs give any sort of benefit? Well, yeah, that'll give her an extra four. <clears throat> so, 16? Yes. 16. So that that's upstairs? Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's a, that's a room... Then. So is there, like, any sort of overlook from the upstairs, or is it completely walled off? It's not walled off. That black line is, like, the banister and whatnot, so All you right. can't see down into the first floor. So <clears> which... <throat> now, the places that are completely black, that would be, you know, the wall, meaning that there's a room on the other side. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so far when she goes up the stairs, all she's smelling is a stronger sense of the blood, but she's not hearing anything else. Okay. In fact, the trail leads her this way and then around the corner. Okay, she goes. Walking, flying. She now comes to a door that's hung open. She and the blood smell is coming purely from in there. She peeks. She gets on the ceiling and and peeks around the top part of the doorway. <clears throat> Maybe. So she's going to peek inside of the room? Yeah. As soon as I get to the right... Okay. So, step her... Well, she has no way of providing her own further light, so she can only see ten feet in front of her. So Is peeking... Um... Low light vision. Low light. So we'll go ahead and spread her radius out. <laughs> there, now it should be, in fact, 20 foot radius, and we'll go ahead and dim it at 10. So, go. let me go ahead and move that door out of the way for you. Woo, technology! Om nom nom. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm assuming that's that's a body of a human. Yeah, when she peeks inside, she sees a man face down on face down halfway in the closet, blood pulling beneath him. Okay. And she also sees the body of a dog next to the bed with a piece of metal shoved into its ear. Okay. Um it, would there be can can she like nudge the, bo- the body of the human to make sure there aren't, uh, like, explosive runes under him, or a trap. Explosive runes only go off when you read them. Yeah. Or any other type of trap type thing. Yeah, when when she pokes, it's just a body. She okay. pokes it, it's um, squishy. Man, we have such a nice GM <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't trap dead bodies. <laughs> then she uses stabilize? It's dead. Oh. He, he's... I mean, you could still do it, and it just won't do anything. <laughs> well, okay. Um, then, then she carefully peers under the bed. There's nothing underneath the bed. Nothing at all. No monsters. I mean, then, peacefully. Then the closet. Well, where's this closet? Well, the closet is half full because of the guy face down. But when she looks inside, she also notices that. His head and part of his torso is in the floorboards. Ha. Ha. In fact, now she can kind of hear chewing. Should she light the entire building on fire? (laughs) Or... (laughs) Ah! Can... Do we have, like, a telekinetic linky kind of thing, and she can tell Lucy this? Sure, why not? Okay. She tells Lucy this. Lucy whispers to, uh, Stanton, Stanton, um, and prepares Entangle. All right. You already cast Entangle on the closet? All right. Uh, this is like an this is like an overhang here. It's it, like there's area beneath it. Well, yeah, like the kitchen and dining room right. area. I, and um, channel energy is an area of effect, so it also affects thirty feet up. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's right. We're getting creative with this one. <laughs> so, what's going to go off first? Her entangled, or are you doing your channel first? We don't know what's in the closet. Okay. We also don't. It might be possible that the closet's a a, a, a mimic. So, as as soon as her her entangled could go off and not kill anything. 
<laughs> not so with channel negative energy. Okay. So, okay, so we'll say that there's a random house plant that immediately grows, busts through the floor, busts through the ceiling, and it wraps around something, and you just hear this shrilling shriek, almost like Gollum. Okay. When he's being held down. <laughs> Would I recognize that as a type of animal sound? No, it's clearly Gollum, because you okay. heard shrieks like that during the raid. Okay. So yeah, you've entangled a goblin in the floorboards. Awesome! Do we necessarily want to kill it right now, or do we... We could ask it questions. I mean, ask it where they took and came from and did things. That sounds like a wonderful idea. <laughs> okay. So we're we're all we're all in the room around the entangled goblin. I'm ass, I'm assuming that's what we're. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, you have to pull the body out first. But when you do. When you pull the body out and allow the vines to bring it up, okay, that's what—that's kind of what he looks like. Ooh, creepy. He—he he looks. Granted, it's only been a few days since the raid, but he looks. You know, goblins eat a lot. He looks rather malnourished. He's foaming at the mouth. He's struggling hard, even to the point where he'll probably cause harm to himself. He's very feral right now. <laughs> As well grins evilly. Uh-oh. He says, ah, ah, ah. And when you pulled the body out, he has been munching on the face and shoulders. Okay. So the guy is clearly dead. Lucy is, Lucy is sickened. Um, so Lucy steps out of the room, uh, to, to maybe see it, see if there's anyone else in the house, or... When you search around, the house is empty. Okay. Okay. Then she finds the bathroom and, and curls. Okay. Stanton closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> what does Stanton do? <laughs> He's going to use guidance on himself. All right. He is also going to use Touch of Law. And he is going to use Intimidate to get every bit of information out of this goblin. And he gets very creative with the techniques. <laughs> it takes you a while because, like I said, this thing is acting very feral-like. But at some... He picks it up by the throat, bashes its head against the wall, and it starts <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Theodora... Theodora offers advice on, you know, even certain though, tasty parts, or... Even though he couldn't really talk, but, yeah. <laughs> He's just sitting there going... <laughs> so, the more you insist on resisting, the more I must insist upon you breaking! <laughs> back beating this thing against the wall. Oh, so... It, event it eventually... Sh it eventually shouts out, um... It eventually shouts, um... All a plan! All a plan! Destruction! <laughs> plan? What plan? Destruction! It's supposed to destroy the long chunks! That's their derogative term for anything more humanoid than they are. How did your plan fail? Body was taken. Your whole plan was to take the body? Take the body, burn the village, take the food, kill the dog, rape the women. <laughs> okay, at rape the, the women, he pokes out one of its eyes. The Adora continues singing that song. <laughs> <laughs> Adding, adding things of, like, burning and, and where were you to, Where were you to take this body? We take the back home, of course. Where's your home, stupid? This is home. This is one's home now. Then where was your old home? No, this is one's home. 
desecrated a dead body. <laughs> we'll speak of your sins later. I it goes to reach for it. Theodora is having fun taunting it. He, he, he lifts it out of reach. May Abadar have mercy on your soul. just killed the gut, the monster in the closet. How do you feel? <laughs> yeah. like, why not? Go goblins are pure are creatures of pure chaos and he's a, a, a representative of order and, and law. He, he feels pretty goddamn justified in breaking its neck. <laughs> I'll go with it. <laughs> He's neutral. He's not good. <laughs> so, but it's the lawful part that comes in the mind, but whatever. I'm a big fan of There was a huge attack with goblins. <laughs> they find a goblin in the town. <laughs> but I said, I'm a big fan of Punisher and things like so. They get what they freaking deserve. <laughs> Those who do harm to others. Serial murders. Rapists. Sadists. Come to know my name. Uh -oh. I like the original. I like the Punisher with John Travolta as the villain. Warzone just sucked. War Journal or Warzone. Admittedly, the Warzone was a bit more accurate to the comics. I'm just gonna, just gonna put that. It up. lost me when he caved a man's face in with his bare fist. <laughs> that that shit happened in the comics, man. I, I know, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so. Uh, Unless you all want to keep going for a few more minutes, it is getting close to ten. Ah, no wonder I'm passing out. Um, That's probably our cue to say wrap up. Yeah. So, um, just to wrap things up, I suppose you go back to the woman who brought you here, right? Yes. Do you tell her the unfortunate news? Uh, as, as, as delicately as he can. She is, of course, still very saddened by this, as are the children. Do how do you leave her be with the house or offer any form of help? If you want, we can put you up in the temple for a few days, cover some expenses as your as we uh, clean up the mess of that filth. She nods and like I. I need to get a hold of my sister and Magmar, too. There's nothing for us here now. We'll pay for the postage for a notice. Thank you. So, we wrap up with the two of you going to sleep. You're going to have a hunt early in the morning. 
He's going to offer the boar as dinner to everybody at the tavern if you go there as well. So, and then we would end up going from there. Alrighty. So, before experience points is handed out, any questions or comments or anything about today's session or the campaign going forward? Uh, none so far. Um, uh, Mr. <coughs> GM, uh, as far as character backgrounds are concerned, are we going to cover that, uh, early next session, or... Yeah, we can. Alright, because... If you yeah. all have character backgrounds in mind, feel free to type them up in the group page, and we could also mention them briefly before the next session as well, on right. tape. Because uh, I remember hearing something about uh, uh, people being kind of confused, or th they, they'd like to hear more about the backgrounds, so... Okay. Yeah. Character backgrounds would greatly be appreciated to even add more flavor into the campaign, especially if they involve anything that could be thrown in in some way. All right. Cool. But, oh yeah, also, before we stop, there is the matter of the other experience points, because so far I gave you, you you I gave you the 800 since you were the only one involved in that. Yeah, I, so, I, I, I love being hit on. <laughs> so you took a huge leap in experience points there. As for the vault, the skeletons, there were two of them that offered 135 each altogether, so the two of you are going to take 45 experience points each for the death of those. Cool. Um, also, write that down for Heather's character since she was there too. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. The fig. Let's see. Since you were both present and making the rolls necessary, the perception checks, survival check, and dealing with the whole event itself is a CR one half. So that's going to give the three of you sixty-five experience points each. Let's see. Shopkeeper's Daughter, you did that. Haven't done that yet. <coughs> Monster in the Closet, you each get 65 more for that. And then Personal Lies. Personal Lies. For... Going after the journal and bringing about more background story, reward each of yourselves, we'll say, reward each of yourselves another 65 for that. Cool. Cool. And these are the personal rewards, so as much as I'd hate to say it, Heather's character can't be involved in that since you were What? Doing she was clear that the best role player here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I will award I will award her some bonus XP next time right. to make up the difference. Um, what else ended up happening? Um, oh, she got hit on by Foxglove. I did. For the role playing of that, take another thirty five. Cool. For the mere fact that you drag that you allowed that whole incident to drag out with the shopkeep daughter and everything, <laughs> go ahead and take another fifty. Awesome. You push the boundaries, sir. And for going Punisher level, take another 50. Alright. Goblins, man. Yeah. They're, 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 they're rats. They're rats that might know how to read. <laughs> Actually, goblins in the Pathfinder world say reading steals your soul. So, so Or it, actually, no. Writing steals your soul, so they do not write. But, th so, they're... They're they're useless. <laughs> they're they're so that was ignorance. So okay. yeah, that's the end of experience points. So add it all up. How's everybody looking towards leveling wise? I brought my calculator. Na, 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 na. But I I can kind of do it on paper. Kind of maybe. Hey. 
Because going strictly by the experience points given out by what's written in the book, I would say that after, depending on how far we get in next week's section, session, you all should end up level two at the end of next week. No, I still got a thousand to go. See, that's... Just trust me. Depending on how deep we go into the next session, you should end up earning the experience points necessary to level up. There's going to be lots of fights, isn't it? If we end up going that deep, yeah. But there's still... There is still a few more... There's still a few more roleplay elements yet to have been played through before that is led into. Cool. Like, like, like the boar hunt. Yes, the boar hunt. The, yeah. the, the boar hunt. Uh... Uh, uh, so, I believe with all that said and done, we can call it a night on what is probably a session filled with a lot more laughs than the last one. And a lot more torture. Yes. Every session needs more torture. <laughs> I, I get the feeling when I listen through this one again, it's just going to be awesome. Uh, and, and Sweet. Uh, are, are, we're, we're still recording, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, all right. Because okay. we haven't said our goodbyes yet. All right. Okay. So this is John the GM signing off. Everyone else, say your goodbyes. Night. Your goodbyes. Ha, ha, ha. Passing out now.